The third Indian expedition to Mount Everest, sponsored by the Indian Mountaineering Foundation. Leader of the expedition, Lieutenant Commander A.M.S. Kohli. Deputy Leader, Major Kumar. Members, Mulkraj, Rawat, Vora, Ankami, B.P. Singh, Aluwalia, Bhangu, Joshi, Bahuguna, Chima, Sonam Wangyal, Navang Gombu, Sonam Gyatso, Gurdyal Singh, Dr. Telang, Dr. Chakravarti, Balakrishnan, and the Nepalese liaison officer, Rana. the 24th of February, 1965. Location, Jayanagar, a railhead in Bihar, near the Indo-Nepalese border. Chaos, confusion, not really. It'll all sort itself out. 25 tons of equipment and stores, 25 tons to be distributed among 800 porters who carry it all up to the base camp. For higher camps, 50 Sherpas. Sherpas are the backbone of any Himalayan expedition. Tundup, the cook, rising in rank with each expedition, now brigadier, soon to be major general. Some of the prettier Sherpanis make eyes at the chief porter to try and get away with smaller loads, but he is inured to feminine guile. Each load of 65 pounds is marked for the particular camp where it will be needed. The bulk of the equipment was fabricated by Indian ordnance factories. For the first time, an Indian expedition carries instant and accelerated freeze-dried food. Last minute preparations, a cold bath before departure. Much lopping off of hair in the hope of growing a lush crop. Major Kumar has no hope.
Farewell, Jainagar. Farewell, home and family. Six months of intense feverish activity, planning, securing equipment, selecting the team, organizing the expedition. The planning has been meticulous. The only imponderable is the weather. No bridges here, got to do it the hard way, perhaps the wet way. Dug out canoes to ferry men, women and precious baggage across the Sunkosi, a cold stream from the melting snows of the high Himalayas. February gone, the first week of March, the daily routine, setting up camp before sundown each day. Thursday, Chang and Rakshi, homemade beer and spirits. Chima loves the stuff. city, this bridge would seem dangerous. 
but this is nothing compared to the hazards that lie ahead, even though here a slip can mean a thousand foot fall. first glimpse of the high Himalayas, the abode of the gods. Higher and higher towards the challenge of eternal snow and ice. The first and the second Indian expeditions to Everest had been forced to turn back almost within reach of the summit. Would this be a case of third time lucky? Kumjung, home of many of the Sherpas, families and friends happy to see their dear ones again. This is the family of assistant Sardar Pudoji, who never dreamt that he was destined to climb Everest. A school established through the efforts of Sir Edmund Hillary. The members of the expedition play with the children of the mountains, mountaineers of tomorrow, for the urge to climb mountains is in the heart of every Sherpa child. Tiangboche. Tiangboche has often been described as one of the most beautiful places in the world. The monastery at Tiangboche is situated at a height of 13,000 feet, a famous and sacred center of Buddhist worship. Tiangboche is known as the gateway to the abode of the gods. The lamas of the monastery, on important occasions, enact the eternal conflict between good and evil. The expedition reaches Tiangboche, the last outpost of civilization. A day's march beyond Tiangboche, no more human habitation, only a world of rock and snow and ice. Each 
high altitude Sherpa is given his mountaineering kit. Boots, crampons, ropes, windproofs, feather jackets. Dr. Telang, busy not only with his own charges, but collecting local patients as well. Ten days of acclimatization, and every member of the expedition is fit and well. All the loads have been checked and the expedition is ready to move to the base camp area. In the distance, the eternal plume of Everest, Chomolungna, goddess mother of the earth. This is the route taken by all the successful expeditions to Everest. The British expedition in 1953, the Swiss in 1956, and the American in 1963. Two Indian expeditions in 1960 and 1962 failed when within sight of the summit, beaten back by the fury of the elements. In this difficult terrain and at this altitude, yaks are the only animals that can carry loads. March the 22nd, the base camp, under the shadow of Kubutse and Lola, will be home for nearly three months. Not comfortable living at a height of 18,000 feet, but there are friends to keep on cheerful. The Sherpas are a wonderfully warm people and courageous. There is no master and servant relationship here, no employer to employee relationship. No Sherpa will risk his life on desolate slope or high ridge unless you have won his affection.
Like a bunch of dedicated rag pickers, members of the expedition rummage in the campsites of previous expeditions. There is a little oxygen in one of the bottles, but the Swiss cheese, any patriotic Swiss would promptly disown. Time to get used to the climbing gear. Time to get used to treacherous ice. Time to put into practice all previous experience. Time to make the self subservient, to be part of a team. the first, and some say, the most formidable challenge in the conquest of Everest, even though it is faced so early. This is an unstable region, subject to avalanches, to shifting blocks of ice. Today, a smooth path. Tomorrow, a deep crevasse. It is here that Brittenbach, of the American expedition, lost his life in the quest of the mountaineer's supreme goal. The first phase of the climb, to establish Camp 1 at 20,000 feet and Camp 2, the advance base camp, at 21,300 feet. task of going to set up the advance base camp with ice axes, pitons, ropes and ladders. Step by step cutting each step in a stubborn wall, climbing up a mass of frozen fury. step, marking the way for those who will follow, making it safe, or trying to make it safe, 
for those bringing supplies for the higher camps yet to be established. Kumar's frostbitten toes were amputated after the Nilkant expedition. With his battery heated socks, he will not be able to make the summit. But with the Sherpas, he organizes supplies for higher camps.